And we're back with uh, Chief Baker. I read the other day that, of course, all agencies and state government, you know, are getting hit. And we're now they're talking about, it looks like there's going to be another hit before the end of the year. And I'm telling you what, there's going to be some serious blood running from the various agencies. Everybody's hurting. But the State Historical Society took a hit. And really, that was to y'all's benefit, I do believe, because didn't you end up uh, taking over Sequoia's home? Yeah, you know, we, a lot of the strength of the modern Cherokee Nation is our partnerships. And we've always partnered uh, with the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. we, we do it every year. Uh, but uh, I guess they got the, the word that any property that was not money generating or making a profit that they needed to divest themselves of. Well, Sequoia's cabin uh, was one of those. It's, it's a little bit more out of the way, uh, but it is of extreme importance to the Cherokee sure people. Sure is. And so it was a, it was a no brainer that uh, uh, we would purchase, purchase it. Uh, they're taking those dollars and helping uh, uh, fix up and, and make the Merle home more active and attractive. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so the, the, they're going to improve something close there to the, to the Cherokee Nation. We're going to take the, the Sequoia's cabin and we will love it. Which brings to mind, the tourism department doesn't seem, in my opinion, to tout some of the finer spots within the Cherokee Nation or the other tribal properties. Is there a place where folk who may be coming to visit or who may be new to the area, uh, where they can visit tribal land, where they can learn for themselves a bit about the Cherokee culture? Sure, and, and funny you should say that, the number one brochure that the state of Oklahoma at any of their tourist uh, centers has, the, the number one ask for is the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've got a brochure that they give out. Uh, they can go to CherokeeTourism.org. Uh, they can go to CherokeeNation.org. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, you could spend a tremendous amount of time in northeastern Oklahoma uh, not only just in Tahlequah, but, uh, but we tout things right here in Claremore that maybe aren't the Cherokee Nation, but they're important to the Cherokee Nation. Sure. And, uh, uh, and we help you know, fund Will Rogers. We help fund uh, the, uh, uh, the old library. We, you know, we're partners with all of these groups. And so when we do a tour bus or we bring people in, we don't just tell them about three or four museums in Tahlequah. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about the, the entire experience around northeastern Oklahoma. You guys have a lot of artists, too, that are internationally known artists. Uh, we just had the art market. Uh, we have it once a year at mm -hmm. the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, uh, the, uh, the Cherokee art market, and it is... Uh, the best of the best are coming to this art market now. Mm -hmm. Used to, our people would uh, try to go to Santa Fe, and, and some of them could, and some of them couldn't, and, and all, but, but we actually have a quality art market right here uh, in Catoosa, and, uh, and it was absolutely fabulous just last weekend. When is the big holiday for the Cherokee Nation? It's always uh, uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day. Labor, Labor Day. Day, yeah, yeah. The first weekend of September, and it's wide open to anybody that wants to visit. Oh yes, it, we invite uh, uh, everybody to come, and you know it's a it's a huge homecoming uh, for for Cherokees, but it's also a opportunity to showcase to non Cherokees as well our rich and and, mm -hmm. and storied history mm -hmm. and culture and and uh, a weekend to, to uh, make new friends and reacquaint with old. You bet, oh, you bet. You know, uh, folks at home need to understand too, if uh, there is the probability that you have uh, Cherokee blood somewhere in your family, you can, with all the names and dates and numbers, contact Cherokee Nation and they can help you research 
uh, a bit further than what you have and what you have access to. Yeah, and and all that are Cherokee cannot be citizens. Exactly. You have to have an ancestor that signed the Dawes Roll, which was the last and final roll of the Cherokee in between 1889 and 1907. And uh, so you have to, that ancestor had to sign that, ro uh, that roll mm -hmm. uh, in order to become a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. Which brings to mind, we have on this campus uh, a fellow that, uh, archeologist, anthropologist, combination. In fact, we had him on the show not too many weeks ago. He's been on a dig up in the northern part of the state. And uh, it's on private land. The dig yielded points, sh uh, shards of pottery, some other artifacts. They're documenting it heavily. Uh, he says it goes back easily 10 to 15,000 years. Are there folk within the Cherokee Nation that if someone wanted to do a dig, they could contact the Cherokee Nation and say, I'd like to explore this? I don't know if that's even been brought up with, with the folks at Tahlequah. Well, I mean, obviously we had hunting parties and other things, mm -hmm. but uh, for the most part, we didn't come to this part of the world uh, until uh, uh, the late 1700s, uh, uh, early 1800s. Yeah, it wasn't a tour bus, as I understand yeah. it. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so most of those digs would be, be uh, in the southeast. Back in the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. And Tennessee, Georgia, yeah. You've had a lot of folks distinguish themselves, too. As a matter of fact, Medal, Re Medal of Honor recipients, mm -hmm. have you not? We have, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, Native Americans, uh, Cherokees, uh, enroll in the military at a higher pace than, than any other ethnic group, if you will. Uh, but we've, you know, we have had uh, admirals, we've had, uh, we've had generals, we've had Medal of Honor winners, we've had uh, a lot of distinguished uh, veterans, but, uh, you know, Cherokees have always honored their warriors, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it goes from before contact. Uh, to present day. That we, we got about two minutes left and I'm, I'm going to have to ask you this because we talked about this when you first were elected. Mm -hmm. And I ask you then, is your family ready for the strain and stress of you being chief of this huge nation? And you said you thought so and you kind of chuckled, I recall, and said, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. How's that all worked out? Uh, my mother couldn't be prouder. Uh, She's 87 years old, and if if, uh, if if Mama's happy with it, I know we're doing a good job. <laughs> That's pretty smooth. Before I let you get out of here, take 45 seconds. Tell me what's coming. What do we look for from the Cherokee Nation for uh, next year? Pretty much finishing up a lot of things that we already have on the table. Uh, you'll we'll, you'll see where we'll be creating some jobs. You'll see where uh, more kids are going to be going to college. You'll see where we're finishing up some construction projects, and uh, and I hope next year we can have some pictures of the uh, expansion at WW Hastings. That'd be great. I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. Hey, thank you for taking time to come out on what has turned out to be a rainy Wednesday. And the joke of the day: the man walks in, it's raining like cats and dogs outside, no water. I pointed this out to the station manager. Chief goes, yeah, it's an old Cherokee trick, and held up his umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget that. All Thank right. you again, my friend. Thanks, sir. It's good to see you. We're all out of time. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Perspectives. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>